Because I'm I like the concept, but the particulars of the implementation are gonna be what makes or breaks it. Tell me I can get a one hit point burning elite here. No. We can get a common relic, a rare relic, a boss relic, or just an upgrade. Pretty spooky uh, act one here. We've got this big, scary early burning elite that kind of cuts off access. I, I mean, it's almost impossible to win a, a fight against this thing as silent here. And to make matters worse, we have slime boss at the end of the act. Entropic Ender, thank you so much for three months of support. Hey, there's Trivius. Hmm. Like maybe with the preserved insect, or I don't know. Uh, so I'm thinking we we will pa probably path through one of these two rest sites. In either case, we have to find an elite afterwards, right? Our options would be option A, go to here. Option B, we go one of these two ways. And either way, there's an elite waiting for us at the end. So there's no avoiding these four elites. And that's okay, because these two are both after the chest, which makes them quite a bit more easy to handle. And we could fight additional elites afterwards either way, depending on how uh, confident we feel. Actually, I particularly like this side, because we get um, both an elite and an additional store. And I guess the pathing from here, elite then the shop, or shop then elite, will be entirely dependent on how much money we have at the moment, and if we feel like we need more stuff before the uh, elite. I also really like making sure we go to a shop in Act 1, because Slime Boss is very terrifying for Silent, and we want to make sure that we're uh, at peak power by spending the resource we've accumulated throughout the act to get some strength here. Very, very important. So, with that all said, I think I'm going to rule out this path. And I'm just going to mark these in gold, I guess, as our decision points. Let's see, we want definitely three combats before the first rest site. Um, I guess two events is going to be what we also take. So with that all said, it's definitely not going to be taking a curse as part of our start. If you can't remove that curse immediately, it's almost never worth it. I would say that Silent usually thrives with the common relic start. Let's see what we get here. Nunchaku, perfectly cromulent. Nunchaku gives us energy for every tenant tax played and is a good incentive to pick up a shiv card. Or three. Like a blade dance it is a lot better. And even if we don't uh even if we don't find any shivs, it'll still give us an energy every ten strikes we play, which can absolutely be very helpful here in our early game. I'm gonna take two here. Willingly. Letting the worm get too many uh, points of strength, or letting this fight go on for too many turns can be a, a really bad thing. With the Nunchaku, something that we'll often want to do is, quote, set it up. Which is to say, have the Nunchaku on 8 or 9 for the first turn of a combat. Uh, exactly the opposite of what I just did here. That way, our additional draws on turn one yields additional energy. And we can um, we can essentially have a lantern. Bolt Vanderhuge, hello and welcome. Bolt asks, is removing basic attacks as soon as possible something to strive for in every run? Not every run. However, I would say it is a good thing to strive for in general. Getting rid of your basic cards is going to improve your... I tend to call it the, the consistency or your draw quality. You'll draw the more impactful cards in your deck more frequently on earlier turns, and you are less likely to draw a hand of cards that is not useful to you, which is uh, something that's particularly devastating the further into the run you get. 
um, the tolerance for a hand of useless cards becomes lower and lower as you go to Act 3 and especially Act 4. So making sure that you get many, if not all, of your starter cards. Uh, usually, you can only realistically get rid of all the strikes, but if you can, getting rid of all your strikes and all your defends is even better. Uh, because you can then replace those with block from upgraded uncommon or rare cards, powers, just way more efficient cards than simple defends. And an easy way to do that is with the Boss Relic Pandora's Box, which if you haven't been taking, I highly encourage. It's one of the best boss relics in the game. You can also use Empty Cage, another boss relic, one that's often, I think, underrated to remove two cards at once, and often your best use for this is two strikes. Now, with that said, a couple of qualifiers. Sometimes you want to remove defense before strikes, particularly Watcher, I would say, likes to remove at minimum two defend cards from her starter deck before she removes any strikes at all. You may also want to keep strikes on Ironclad, uh, and remove defense first for him. But he is a, he's quite versatile and can really go either way with strike or defend and removes. You also don't want to remove too many strikes too early before you've added other sources of damage because if you remove two or three of your starting strikes, you're left with almost nothing damage-wise uh, and the very early encounters can become very threatening to you in that situation. It can be quite tricky to talk about the strategy of Spire because Spire is definitely a game where there is an exception to every rule. And there's a lot of rules with a lot of exceptions. One of the most fo I'm going to uh, intentionally unoptimize the damage here to get one higher on the Nunchaku as we go into the next fight. We could have played Neutralize, Strike, Strike and just won the fight there, but... This way I get one more strike played. Speaking of strikes, we need some damage. Oh, that's right, I owe the crowd a dad joke. You'll have to excuse me, I was dagger throwing my attempted humor. But don't worry, I'll come up with a sneaky pun that'll strike you when you're not expecting it. How's that for some verbal acrobatics? Uh, Monolith brings up an excellent example of a situation where it's not quite so straightforward. What about perfected strike on ironclad? Do you remove strikes first or defends? And it, the answer is actually, it, it kind of does depend. Yes, the strikes do make your perfected strike do two or three more damage, but as you note, they're crappy draws themselves. So depending on how many perfected strikes you have, you might do better by still removing the strikes. You may be better off removing defends first, but if the defends are still useful to you, for example, if you've got corruption and you can exhaust them, then you probably want to remove strikes. So I would say with perfected strikes, still do consider removing the strikes because that uh, that consistency is is definitely helpful. That's glorious, broken bard. Uh, if for all those wondering, actually, we do have an exclamation point seeds list of. Pandora's Box Duplicate Seeds. So if you're looking for a uh, a fun Pandora's Box seeded run to play with a whole bunch of copies of any card you could imagine, uh, it's in there, courtesy of Gamer Puppy and their Play the Spire seed searching efforts they did a while back. So all, all three of these are discard interaction effects. That's kind of cool. Sneaky Strike requires a card to have been discarded already on the turn, something we can't reliably do at the moment. So what we should do is take the attack that gives us the draw and discard. Dagger Throw, which I think is a very good early damage pick for the Silence. It does better than average damage. Well, maybe not better than average, but it's significantly better than a Strike. And the draw one, discard one, allows it to... I wouldn't say cycle your deck faster because it's only drawing the the one card that is 
added by its own inclusion in the deck, so... I like to think of attacks that draw one as not taking up a slot in the deck. That's not quite true, but... Feels about right. Yeah. Strike Survivor or Leg Sweep here? I think I want to Strike Survivor. Very much a damage race against the cultist who missed gains energy, uh, strength every turn, not energy. We gain energy every turn. The cultist does not. All right, and another little example of optimization. Yes, I can just kill with dagger throw, but I can instead kill with uh, neutralize and one more attack and get one higher value on the nunchaku. Ooh. Sulfur, thanks for that gifted sub to Ilum. And how's it going, Il uh, speaking of? Ilum says, just got back from finishing up my biochem finals and got a low 90s on both. I've officially finished your undergraduate degree. Congrats, that's an amazing feeling. And uh, yeah, I in your position, I'd be pretty freaking stoked with low 90s on uh, biochem finals of all things. So well done, well done. I was just having a flashback to my inorganic chemistry final in junior year. I definitely got like a 60 on that exam. Thankfully, I did better than most other people on the exam. So I ended up with like a B plus in that class. That was a tough class. I definitely remember leaving about a third of the final blank because there was a chapter that I just could not wrap my head around for some reason. I can't remember the specifics of inorganic enough to, to actually describe what the subject was on. Again, I never learned it in the first place. Uh, I ended up learning it more properly this, the following semester. But I just kind of hoped that it wouldn't be on the exam, and it totally was. And I was like, well, I'm screwed. But yeah, I passed the class, so that was good. That was definitely good. That was not as bad as the time that I misread the scheduled time of the final and showed up to a different chemistry final one hour after the exam had started. I got a weird look from the TA as I came in. And I was like, how come everybody else started? And then I realized, oh no. So I only had half of the exam time to, uh, to actually complete it. But thankfully I was able to hustle. And I totally passed that one. However, I was never late to an exam again. Because that was the worst feeling. Anyway, I'm taking a malaise here. I think it's a little early, but uh, I think it's super cool to be offered that. And I didn't really want that quick slash. Hey, we're offered card removes. Here's a great example of a situation where I don't think we should remove a strike. Because the stack is very low on damage output. We've added two defensive cards and one offensive card. So we've actually skewed ourselves a little bit more in favor of defense than offense. We also have a relic that incentivizes playing lots of attacks. So if we're going to remove a card, and we should here, it's going to be a defend. What did I do for a living prior to streaming? I had a degree in... Well, I still have a degree in chemistry. I guess I didn't, didn't really lose that. I just don't use it anymore. And I used that uh, to uh, work at a couple of colleges in my state. I did a little bit of lab course adjunct work. So I was an instructor for laboratory courses. Um, and I also kind of maintained and operated the chemistry lab at one of the smaller colleges here, which made me turn in my degree. That's right, I had to fax it to them. And now I don't have it anymore. Oh, and we get offered another removal. Remove Transformer Upgrade. 
Wait, you're telling me the guy who spent 6,000 hours playing one video game is a nerd? Oh no. So, for the Remove Transform Upgrade event, my criteria for this event is usually as follows. Upgrade is what you pick when you have an elite imminent and you need more help for that elite. Like, if I wanted to fight the Burning Elite here, the only way that I could possibly make that work is by upgrading Dagger Throw, I think. Realistically, it's pretty suicidal to do this. If we get max health Legavulin, we're just instantly dead. So, uh, I would much rather go the green path. And if you don't need the immediate upgrade, then it's better in the long term to take a removal or a transform. One removal is better than one upgrade. You get much more upgrade opportunities in a run to slay the spire than you do removal opportunities. If you can currently defeat your act boss, it's okay to remove. Otherwise, what you should do is transform and add a random card as you remove. Since I already, already got rid of one defend, I'm going to transform a strike here and turn it into something random. Random cards have a pretty high chance to be rare or uncommon, so there's a pretty good odds you get something good. In this case, we get Caltrops. I actually think Caltrops is a very good offensive power to pair with a very defensive silent deck at the moment. So I'm not unhappy to have that at all. I might even upgrade it. My only problem is that it's not any good against Slime Boss. But overall, yeah, I'm actually quite happy with Caltrops. That'll do quite a bit more damage than Strike in most fights. Big 10,000 hour mark. Oh man. Well, that'll be a couple of years from now, thankfully. Okay, so we're gonna go here. I don't think that I get to upgrade the Caltrops or the Malays. I probably have to upgrade Dagger Throw so that we're better against this elite. You should upgrade your best damage cards first and foremost. Well, that might be Caltrops. Very worrying if that's Caltrops. Uh, notably, the upgraded Dagger Throw is also the best attack upgrade for the slime boss fight out of what we have currently. Would have preferred that we found some sort of area damage card, but uh, that did not happen. Hmm. Dagger Throw will do 9, so if I bring this one to 9 health, we can kill it with Dagger Throw next turn. And I can comfortably block here. No need to waste our Explosive Potion on this lousy set of opponents. Caltrops is area damage, in a sense. However, it's not going to cause these lice to curl up, unfortunately. So I'm probably not playing it here, although it is actually fairly efficient damage in this fight. Uh, the specific way that these enemies behave, I think, prevents me from wanting to use it at this moment. Because I really want this one to die next turn. And I also really want to full block this turn. I don't want to draw malaise again. Right, because then this turn ensues, and the only way this turn goes really well is if Dagger Throw Leg Sweep occurs. Which it did. Guess I could have also played that strike there too. Should have. Get him, Caltrops. I suppose is there a particular louse you should go at first. So lice have... Here, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the lice. There's two kinds of lice. Yellow lice and red lice. Um, both lice have uh, an attack value that they can do. And then each louse has a special thing. The yellow lice will up spit web at you to apply weaken. And the red lice will buff their strength to become stronger over time. So... You've got uh, a little bit of differentiation there already that you can use to make some some choices. The other thing to know about the lice is their damage values. Um, they roll randomly between 6 and 8 damage for their attack. And that's a number that stays the same for a given louse. So a, 
a, a lice that attacks for six is always going to attack for six on any turn. Whereas if it has a base damage of eight, it'll still do eight every time it attacks. So if you see them doing different damage numbers, go for the ones that are doing more damage, because those are the more dangerous lice. Um, but otherwise, it's usually about killing the ones that are attacking you on the turn that they're attacking you, and ignoring the ones that are providing you free turns, at least for a little bit. Well, 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 what have we here? Blade Dance Nunchaku certainly is a thing. This card essentially refunds a third of its price. Whereas Dagger Spray helps with Slime Boss quite a lot. I think I'm going to grab this Blade Dance. But it's a tough choice, actually. I think I'm also eager to go into more combats, since we don't have two potions yet. And I would say that we're definitely not done adding cards to this deck. Uh, we should continue to take more combats over events. So definitely take a, a combat here for the chance of a potion in particular. Get him. 20 health. All right, well, I'm not gonna KO this nerd with these draws. But I really would prefer not to take three, so let's see what we can do here. The stinky thief gets away, so help me. Good. You're going nowhere, buddy. Alright, still no potion. I would be okay with a flying knee. Uh, flying knee in particular works well with malaise. I think that we should probably take another attack card here because we're not quite consistent enough for this elite to feel comfortable. In particular, Lagavulin, very scary. After a single strength debuff, our blade dance will do basically no damage, and that's bad. How about going for lower health lice? Yeah, that's also that's also a really good a choice to make. If you can kill the lice in one hit, or you know, if, if you're gonna be able to kill a lice when it's attacking versus you don't have the damage to do it, it's much better to go for the one that you can kill versus the one that you can't. Just picking them off. Percy Paxson says, all my Caltrops runs end at act two. Any tips? Yes, you need to pair the Caltrops with immediate front-loaded damage. As you'll note, um, the Caltrops get you murdered against Gremlin Leader and Triple Slavers. Absolutely. So one thing to note is uh, if you don't have the immediate damage, if you don't have potions or relics or cards that can kill one Slaver Man on turn one, then don't go to elite fights if you can help it. Um, and stick to the regular fights. But do try to add damage sources other than the Keltrops so that you can take down really threatening... Wow, that's a lot of health. Really threatening enemies very quickly. You do get the Stinky Egg. I was worried about that. I drew Fly Knee on this turn. Interesting. Probably just Malaise for three. Don't play the Caltrops, but it is deeply unclear to me. Did Caltrops Malaise for two? Actually, here's an important question. When weakened, does the Malaise matter? 18 is weakened to 13, right? Yeah, 18 goes to 13, whereas 17... Oops, 17 times 0.5. Goes to twelve. Okay, so it will be it will be a different number. Yeah, playing Caltrops is good because we won't draw it again, definitely, and I don't have to play it. But it is one less damage per turn. Leary asks, how does Slave Spire handle decimal damage? Uh, offensive values are rounded down no matter what. However, healing values, if you end up with a fractional healing, that gets rounded up. 
So all damage rounded down, healing rounded up. All right, we'll do it this way. And that's a good first waking turn, I suppose. I'll start with Blade Dance, Strike, Strike, and we'll go from there. Next turn, I get to actually do some decent damage thanks to Nunchaku giving me more energy. The fight against the Lagavulin is very much a race against time. The longer this fight goes on, the nastier the egg gets. So we definitely want to be playing strikes over playing defends that don't block for full gear. We pretty much want to play all the strikes we draw every time we draw them. Interesting example. Probably choose to play one defend here, though. But it might actually be correct to play two strikes. It might be so important that we do the six damage uh, just because of how weak we're going to become shortly. You know, I think that might be correct, actually. Let's not short ourselves on any damage in, in this fight of all fights. That would be bad. Gonna have five energy on this turn. And with it, I can do very little, actually. Now that we have minus two strength, these shivs are only doing two damage. Very spooky. Plus four, so Explosive Potion gets the kill here. I think I can just go Dagger Throw Leg Sweep, keep the Explosive Potion. We take only four. Happy to, t to lose four health to keep this potion at the moment. Get a second explosive potion. Slime boss, pre pre prepare yourself. And holy moly, look at that. A wraith form and a thousand cuts. What interesting offers. Wraith form is the ultimate defensive card. However, in a deck that's already very defensive, it doesn't fulfill as much of a purpose. Hilariously, meanwhile, thousand cuts actually pretty good at getting us through Slime Boss, at least if we upgrade it. Is this the ever so rare thousand cuts over Wraith Form pick? Do I use a keypad with a numpad? Nope. That keyboard with a numpad, excuse me. No, I do not. My keyboard has no numpad. It is a small keyboard. SOS Pylon says, I want to love Thousand Cuts so much, but it's not very good. Agree. I really feel like Thousand Cuts would be a much better card if it cost one less. It's so difficult to, uh, to justify the price of at the moment. However, it does have decent utility if upgraded. In situations where you can spam a lot of cards. And we are in such a situation. So this thousand cuts might just be a cut above the rest, wouldn't you say, Fizzglow? Do I want a bottled flame? I could bottle the dagger throw. I guess that's not terrible. Gives me a little bit more cycle on turn one. Sure. It's better than skipping the relic, I guess, but not by much. Card this, I'm not playing it. I can play the strike if I want, or I can get the Nunchaku next turn. Take it next turn. Actually, I have Energize next turn already. Never mind, I'll take it this turn. Yeah, didn't need a next turn. Cool. Did not get a potion that I didn't need. Car 
draw is definitely a thing that could be helpful. Actually, with thousand cuts, deflect is genuinely okay. Hmm. Just any free card is worth thinking about. Great question in chat asks, Rabbit Walrus, how do you, can you see two rares directly beside each other like after that elite fight? I thought rare chance reset to zero when you see a rare. Yes, however, elites have a higher chance of dropping rare cards. Uh, I think a, a plus 7% over base. Which means that when the, uh, when the rare chance resets, you'll be at 5% chance to see a rare per card from an elite. So from an elite, you can see two, or even sometimes, if you're really, really lucky, three rare cards at once. Because even at base rare chance, elites have a chance to drop rare cards. This is also true for shops. Shops have their own, uh, I think even higher than elite rarity that they use for generating the cards. So it's not uncommon to see a shop with tons of rare cards. Speaking of shops, since we're in a pretty good position here, we have got double explosive potion. I think we're good to head into an elite without stopping up at a shop. That way we'll get to have the money from the elite um, when we go into this store. And it means that we'll also be able to maybe replenish our potions if I use one or even, dare I say, both explosive potions to kill this gremlin knob. Never know, right? Alright, striking is going to be more damage than the Keltrops, although the benefit of the Keltrops is that I can't play, uh, draw it again. Surge Blurred says, why are some paths highlighted? We're using a mod called Map Marks, which allows me to highlight the map however I see fit. I can even draw on the map um, to just communicate to the, to the stream. I use this to mark where I'm going to go on my journey through the Spire so that uh, everybody can get a little bit more insight into how I'm choosing where I'm going and the potential consequences as we do. Exclamation point map has the link to it. This is not a mod that's on the Steam Workshop at the moment. Stell, thank you so much for two metric years of support. Here's to two more. I draw a duck. It is highly likely to result in failure if I attempt to draw. So I can bring you to 40. Looks like we are going to be using both... Exp Actually, I only got 12 damage next turn. Hold on. Math time. So what's my maximum damage line? Thousand cuts, strike, survivor... Next turn, strike, strike, defend, malaise. How much is that actually? We do one, two, three, nine this turn. Pretty six minus nine. And then 12 plus four minus 16. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, of course. All right, so we are one damage shy of killing the Grumman Knob. It's also, yes, actually no, two, because we don't get damage from playing Thousand Cuts when we play the Thousand Cuts. That's right. And that's coming with, that's with both potions. Excuse me. So if I used both potions, I would be two damage shy of killing the knob, even with optimal. Um, yeah. But that means that we have to tank the hit next turn with leg sweep. I'm trying to evaluate what that means for survivor. Survivor makes us take three more damage this turn, five more damage next. Actually, a little bit less than five more next turn because of weaken. But blocks for eight, so it will be a net gain of health by one or two. It also deals one damage, so we'll be doing it. 24, all right.
if I play the malaise. The knob gets quite a bit angrier, but it means I can't redraw the malaise. I do need to draw pretty non-terribly in order to kill next turn. There's definitely a lot of draws we could get with only five cards. If I draw all block cards, I won't be able to, to kill him. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be seven, eight dead draws. I'm gonna take the four to uh, improve our odds here. Okay. That's a good roll. Right there. That's the kind of draw that means I have to only use one explosive potion. Good stuff. Oh my, we get a gambling chip allowing me to discard any number of cards on turn one. And draw that many again. We also get another Blade Dance, so now this Thousand Cuts is looking like... actually decent. Um, as does the Nunchaku, of course. Okay. I think... I think things are happening. More knives, please. Uh-oh. Hmm. Is this where my other Explosive Potion gets used? I also use the thousand cuts to kill the louse on turn one here. An interesting possibility. Or uh, with the energy potion, probably. Yeah, let's see what we get here. Okay, that looks pretty workable. In fact, with only nine block, I bet I can just kill the louse through the uh, curl up block here and then block the jaw worm with only one energy spent. Avox Silence, thanks for 22 moons of support. Heck yeah. yeah let's do it this way. Take one. potion, so a little bit of a punish there. I could have saved three health and kept the potion, but eh, not a big deal. Repair is not terrible here. Really does need an upgrade, though. Upgrade I don't have for it currently. Maybe we'll be able to find an upgraded one later. It's just nice having zero cost cards when you've got a thousand cuts, right? This could, this could be two damage to all enemies, and it kind of doesn't take up a slot in the deck. But I consider adding the Relic Stats mod. Guess what? I've considered it, I agree, and I've instantaneously installed it upon your request. Behold, the Nunchaku has given us 10 energy so far this run. Would I take a second Keltrops here? Absolutely not. I think we're already at uh, enough powers contributing to our damage. We don't need any more. These will slow us down at this point. I could maybe think about flechettes, but I don't think we have the skill density to get there quite yet. Although, I mean, these blade dances are both skills. Maybe. <laughs> That's alright. Uh, uh, yeah, no, no worries. Uh, I think specifically, if I'm not in a combat, the stats don't show for the uh, Slay the Relics extension. It should work if you mouse over the relics while I'm in a fight. I don't know why it doesn't work when I'm not. I am personally offended. This is a crime.
What's the gauge for knowing how much damage is too much damage? That, alas, mostly comes from experience. You could do some... You could do some arithmetic to get there, comparing the health value of upcoming boss or expected elites versus what your possible hands are and the, the ways that you can do damage. Generally speaking, it's pretty good to keep doing damage until you can do about 200 per turn, which is the maximum that is beneficial to deal to heart. And sometimes it's often not economically possible to increase your damage. Uh, a lot of times, so for example, with, uh, with the extra Caltrops, um, powers, of course, just keep adding to our damage over time, of course, but over time is not something we have unlimited amounts of. So we have to weigh the benefit of additional damage powers against the cost of drawing and playing another power card each combat. And when fights only last three to five turns in the shorter ones, we really want to make sure that we're able to uh, have a good short game to win exactly that, that threat of act two that is going to be a problem. A card like Backstab really helps with that, but I'm also strongly considering a sneaky strike in a world where we have... Well, I guess a, since the dagger throw plus is bottled, actually, it's kind of worse. Ah. Hmm. Interesting. Something like accuracy to boost the damage, or if there was any other way to get, say, additional damage every time we played a shiv, um, that kind of card would be really helpful, too. Oh, hey! All right, well, Thousand Cuts doesn't exactly do a ton. Only two more per shiv once upgraded, but that is genuinely going to be part of our damage plan, at least in the short term. We could consider looking at a lot of cards with Ori here. Ori could definitely help flesh out the deck in a really big way. Could be multiple backstabs in there. Could be sneaky strikes. Could be acrobatics. Could be accuracies. Could be a lot of things, although all of it will be unupgraded. I can afford that alongside a card remove too, which would be great. I don't mind removing another strike now that we have two blade dances. But simply being able to look at five card rewards at the same time, very, very powerful. Since I don't have any benefit for buying potions, and I think most of the rest of my money would be spent on cards anyway, let's, yeah, let's take a look at the Ori and see what's inside. There's an accuracy, instantly found. And a wraith form. And another wraith form. <laughs> what? Hello, would you like two wraith forms? Anyone? But actually, what if I went Acrobatics Tactician instead? And Calculated Gamble here, and just skip all of these Wraith Worms. Obviously, Wraith Worms are very, very strong. We're going to be way behind on upgrades if we take them both. I honestly don't feel like that's very good. Hmm. Deck desperately needs an apotheosis. Simply never add any more cards. Tempting. Escape plan is also tempting. But no, we gotta take the accuracy. All right, I'm going to give this a try. I'm I'm going to skip both of these Wraith Forms. This is a weird... So we've officially skipped three Wraith Forms in Act 1? Yes, believe me, I'm doing it. If we end up dead, I'll take the heat for it. i got to try this. So with, the, with our card draw, the deck should feel smaller, not bigger. Notably, we can even uh, calculate to gamble the shivs if we want to. No longer feel like we need to upgrade Thousand Cuts for Slime Boss, but I'm going to do it anyway. I definitely meant to remove a card when I was in there, too. But I'll take the extra cash. Iron. Beautiful. Don't want to discard that stuff. Kind of. I would like to draw to my accuracy. 
to get rid of the malaise in this fight. Pretty scary going into the slime boss with only 17 health, but I'm pretty confident that especially with the thousand cuts, we can make it happen. More damage next turn, please. It's 1082. Minus 577. Perfect. Get hacked, slime boy. I haven't used that potion quite yet. Double blade dance. The redancening. That went well. Do I take another one? That seems ridiculous. Venom is also a weird option. 2,000 cuts? And we even already have a malaise to make sure this deck doesn't lose to Time Eater instantly. That's pretty sweet. Glass Knife is uh, very much an Act 2 kind of card. That would help a lot. Man, we're so far behind on upgrades. I really don't... I don't see a lot of power there for us. Hmm. Wraith Form, no. Thousand Cuts, yes. Pony, they 314, thank you so much for converting that Prime sub to a Tier 1. Get that recurring payment going. Heck yeah. Believe in the power of the mummified hand. We kind of have to, right? Maybe that's why we skipped the card remove by accident, was to make sure we'd have enough money for the mummified hand. That's right, Virtual 256. The damage from 1,000 cuts will not activate in Venom, even if the card that we played was an attack. The 1,000 the cuts won't activate the Venom, just the damage from the attack itself. And we have a gambling chip... All right, I'll do 2,000 cuts. I guess currently we're at 3,000 cuts. We'll see what we can do with that. If we're going to do that, we absolutely need more energy. I'm kind of okay with a Philosopher's Stone, giving enemies one additional strength. One, not so big a deal when I can remove that additional strength using the one energy I'm given on one of our turns. Right? The, the malaise just kind of detracts from the Philosopher's Stone 2 with Gambling Chip for energy per turn. We might be getting a lot of turn 1 KOs here. Not bad with all of our Wraith Forms, that's right. I do like being able to turn these into better potions. I wish we could take Black Star here. But I don't think we're going to do very well against the Elites of Act 2 if we don't have 4 energy. So I'd probably rather take the Philosopher's Stone. But maybe there was a world where Black Star is correct? It's not this world. I was going to tell you straight up. It's definitely not this world. This is a spooky act, man. Um, Guess I'm going to either not a shop or an early shop. I think I'd rather go to an early shop than not a shop. We're behind on upgrades, and this act is definitely offering us the potential to get back on the upgrade train. Look at this. Upgrade, 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 upgrade. I'd not be completely offended if this was a zero elite act. Uh, although I think I would rather maybe fight this one. We've got some elite fighting option here. You're in red. The intended path then becomes something like this. This is technically also an option. And then we get started with a card removal. Although that's a lot of fights. If I want one event, I go here. Event is what? Apparitions would be ridiculous. Can you imagine if, they, <laughs> if this was a triple Wraith War Apparitions deck? 
But I don't have any way to stop the instances of one damage that would, like, really rapidly accumulate. Yeah, I, I quite like where we ended up, actually. Combats or card rewards? Fifteen non-shrine events. That's a lot of events. That is a lot of events. What's the other reasonable possibility? Let's go this way. Oh, you're super hacked, dude. You are boned. Yes, you. did I just do to myself? Ow. Blah. That's a total, uh, should have had frozen eye moment. Yikes. Playing that acrobatic severely punished me. There was no way I could have known it was going to do that. But that's what happened. Unupgraded common cards are pretty stinky once you get to Act 2. Generally speaking, I don't even consider them 90% of the time. There really has to be some solid synergy here. If I had dexterity of any kind, I would take a deflect, but without any dex, I can't do it. <laughs> they just keep coming. Four Wraith Horms. Untaken. I might just add another Blade Dance very for... Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Carter Move and Blade Dance. Hack these Wraith Worms. Can you imagine if I had four Wraith Worms in this fight? Just think about it for a second. Prepare's bad. Prepare's not worth paying for. We skipped an upgraded prepared last act. I'm really more interested in an upgraded one. Um, I'm gonna play this one. Yeah, that's better. That's more like it. Disaster. Simple disaster. infinite blades even though we do like shivs it's a very slow way to get shivs so it was cloak and dagger unupgraded I would take upgraded cloak and dagger power potion actually rather like the current potions especially if we're gonna think about fighting an elite so I'll be skipping the power potion and the card reward oh I can even go this way I didn't see this option Face Trader is here. We trade our face to get a good face or a bad face, or we can trade health. I think we're still early enough in the run that the good faces would be really, really, really good. And sure, weakness on turn one might be bad, but it wouldn't be catastrophic. Let's risk it. 
Heck yeah. Serpent Head says whenever we enter a question mark room, we gain 50 gold in addition to the contents of the event room. That is a huge boon. We might even actually skip this fire and just go triple events at the end of the act now because of just how good this is. 50 gold plus a shop with a terror in it or a card removal. Terror doesn't actually multiply all of our damage, right? It doesn't affect the thousand cuts. It doesn't affect the caltrops. So I'm a little bit less inclined, although I can just, I know I can't go terror or card removal. That's right. Okay. So for that reason, I'm probably just going to go card removal here. Is footwork any good here? It's definitely not bad. Footwork augments our defense quite nicely. Is yet another card that craves an upgrade, which makes it a little difficult to include, but certainly not impossible. Could have had Tungsten Rod with the four Wraith Forms. Now that would have been pretty good, actually. Actually, well, well, not quite, because if I'd spent 150 gold on the, the fourth Wraith Form, I wouldn't have the ability to buy the Tungsten Rod, of course. But still, you, I mean, we'd have a lot of intangible, that's for sure. That's for sure. All right, what's the most important upgrade at the moment? Genuinely Tactician? Genuinely Tactician, okay. I'm going to avoid this elite. We might fight this one, but I'm not going to fight this one right now. I'm going to fight these two. All right. Prepare for a world of pain, lady. Can actually be worth it to kill the Mystic on turn one if you can uh, you can do so before the Centurion gets any strength buffs. That's definitely where we're at right now. Hope you brought your stabbing pants. Bring me my stabbing pants. See, so I can go thousand cuts, accuracy, blade dance, blade dance. And these will be 8 damage each. Oh yeah, that's definitely going to kill. So I'm just going to wipe her off the field here. This does enable the Centurion to do a times 3 multi-attack, which he chooses not to do, not today. Not ever. I've got a thousand cuts here. There it is. You can shut that down with malaise. This is a reasonable time to energy potion, actually. Easy. Drops are able to kill. Get a duplication potion, very powerful. Infinite blades, blade dance, or dagger throw plus. I'll take one more blade dance. Four blade dances feels like the right amount for this deck. Although we have to be really careful about time eater. Super duper careful. Upping the malaise feels pretty helpful. But I'm dedicated to my craft, so I'll upgrade the other thousand cuts first. 
Mummy hand. Juzu bracelet. Actually, wait. No, let's take the sapphire key. Although Juzu bracelet would increase my chances of getting uh, the Colosseum event, specifically. Could be worth considering. Oh my. Well, heck. Let's go for the Chosen first, in this case. If I've got this kind of damage output, you better believe it. Dang it. <laughs> Why am I always one short? Every time. Alright, well then, boop you. going to become strong. Too strong. Must be careful. Each. Let's hope the mystery card is useful. Otherwise I might have to explosive potion. Is the good card. Huzzah. This is two cards in one, so it kind of works with Thousand Cuts, but I'm not impressed. Alright, given that we have Serpent Head, I do think it is better to go three question marks than it is to take the Elite and the Fire. So I think I'll go... So I either upgrade and take three events, or I fight the Elite and take three events. Given our current situation, I think I'm going to fight the Elite and then take the three events. We should easily beat an Elite with these potions. Even if it is this one. I just need to get to Malaise here. Not find malaise, but I did find a really, really good set of cards otherwise. Cool. Like Sweep does most of the block, brings it down to a 6x2. I'll take one. One is acceptable parameters. Pot the malaise. Maybe. This is my hand. Probably. Yeah, any other situation results in quite a bit of damage this turn. Fair enough. To the Shadow Realm. Akabeko makes our first attack. Each combat do more damage. That right there is an after image. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Whenever we play a card, gain one block. Now we could upgrade that to be an eight, but I think with the gambling chip, we actually don't want to do that. What we do want to do is gain three strength on turn one so that we can absolutely obliterate our opponents. Another reasonable option. And Jax would have been really, really funny in a, in a world where we take in like many wraith forms in the uh, tungster rod. This would just be free gain strength. Pretty funny. Lastly, transforming two strikes is very, very powerful on average. But I think with this many blade dances, we're really going to appreciate extra damage on turn one in the form of the mutagenic strength to enable us to swiftly and decisively put an end to combats. 
50 gold and plus one permanent strength. So now all the shivs do one more damage forever. And a fight plus 50 gold against these nerds. These freaking nerds, man. Twenty damage shoot. The ultra shoot. Please we can you actually. I'm planning on killing the fungi beast next turn. Great. Does deal ten. I'll try to preserve all of my health. I don't know if it's gonna go well. It is. Thank goodness. Exactly nine block. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Distilled Chaos will play the top three cards of the draw pile. And here's a footwork that I don't have to pay for. I don't know that I actually want it at the moment. Again, unupgraded is definitely a price. Looks like next upgrade is going to be either accuracy or malaise. In the short term, we should up the accuracy, keep upping our damage output. We could think about upping the blade dances. Not sure about that. Too many powers is definitely something we're running the risk of. We got one, two, three, four, five currently. Awakened One fearsomely calls in the distance, although footwork helps against Awakened One more than it hinders. Upgrading Gamble to be reusable, definitely also worth considering here. Like I said, we have lots and lots of good upgrades. This could be an, even be an upgrade all sort of deck later on. But I'm going to start with the accuracy to make sure our damage output is where it needs to be. Could malaise for a lot on turn one here. But I think what I will do is put the both thousand cuts into play. That way I can do four damage to every enemy. I have to do that order so that uh, the Nunchaku actually worked. Keep this malaise around. Four damage to all enemies every time I play at any card, which is undeniably powerful here. Not the world's worst draw. This is going to do a lot of area damage, so I think we can kill one or both of them. Might have to use the explosive potion. Play all of this. So this is another 24 AoE. So I have to do 11 to kill them. Oh yeah, I can just get them both. Boop. Fifteen damage per shiv feels pretty good. Um, that's bad. Might have to distill chaos next turn. Oh no, that's the uh, mega debuff turn. Never mind. This is perfect actually. It's pretty sad hand. Get him, blade dance. It's beautiful. GG. That was a very fast collector kill. And we're offered a second copy of After Image to keep up the block as we spam our cards. This is what we need to counter the beat of death from the heart. Although we won't be able to gain block. 
relative to cards. Helps a lot against Time Eater 2. Yeah, for another thousand cuts. The after image, I think, much better. Doesn't need the upgrade like the thousand cuts does. Speaking of upgrades, we could take Fusion Hammer here. Preventing ourselves from being able to get further upgrades, but giving us additional energy every, each turn. Probably more reliable is the Hovering Kite, giving us energy the first time we discard a card each turn. That makes the Dagger Throw, the Acrobatics, definitely want to upgrade Calculated Gamble now. Survivor as well. And it guaranteed works on turn one thanks to the Gambling Chip. Makes our malaise a lot better. I'll take the Hovering Kite. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. Okay, we have to go for the Burning Elite, which means we get to take a bunch of event rooms with, for money. I like it. And then another shop later. Perfect. Mark that in yellows. We'll see how we feel. We're there. Would not take 999 gold. Would I upgrade everything? I will think about it. Shivening. I couldn't even actually full block. It's funny. I'll put two aggro there. Fighting Time Eater. Finisher actually helps quite a bit against Time Eater, because it essentially doubles all the attacks we played that turn. We really want a well-laid plans to go with it, but it's definitely a start. I wouldn't say it's a Time Eater solution, but it's a Time Eater helper. Ooh, Orange Pellets. Could let us keep the three strength. Also can allow us to remove other debuffs like, oh, I don't know, all the Wraith Forms? Escape plan for nice and cheap is definitely worth including, too. So it's either pellets, card removal, escape plan, or it's just by the incense burner. Hmm. Since Burner definitely could help dramatically in certain fights. And I really like being able to remove debuffs. Yeah, we're really good at triggering the pellets because the blade dances are an attack and a skill at the same time. And we have a lot of powers. Since we can get the other stuff with it, I'm going to go Orange Pellets here. Going to need those defends later. Uh, now, also, a Speed Potion would be totally a way to, like, end game. Oh, and we do. Hmm. This deck will be exceedingly powerful if I upgrade all of its cards. We get all four Blade Dances upgraded. So we get one more Shiv from each of those. Acrobatics draws more cards. Our block cards block for more. Our strength reduction cards strength reduce for more.
However, any damage we take is going to stick around, and that's most problematic here. I do think we want a lot of health for heart. But the improvement in our defense is... inescapably powerful. That said, getting another rare relic from fighting a boss, getting another card reward, getting more money, also very helpful. Yeah, I really don't see a way through Time Eater that doesn't involve taking damage. That's my current problem. I also don't necessarily want more shivs against Time Eater. Alright, I'll fight the boss. But I'm not going to like it because it's Hexaghost. Wait, this is not better. Help! Someone help! I have too much health for this fight. Oh wait, Hexaghost is almost dead. Ah! <laughs> the number's too large! Send help! Well, that's a distilled chaos kind of situation, because this don't do it. Help! There we go. We got our potion back. We also got a turnip, which is mostly irrelevant, and another tactician. Which is actually a trap, I think. We want a reflex. Could really help with the malaises, though. I don't actually think we need this. We need to be trading our energy for card draw, not the other way around at this point. I'm gonna skip. All right, Flyney, I am absolutely happy to get rid of you. You're a common attack we've had since the early game. Your inclusion, not necessary. Your removal, not unwelcome. And thanks to not taking the upgrade all, I don't mind losing 10 health to get three options here, which could lead to some really, really good finds, like finesse, like finesse, or like finesse. Actually, maybe panic button. Although it's very hard not to just take triple finesse here. <laughs> now we really just want a little bit of dex and we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the panic button. Panic button's very, very good against uh, time eater, especially. Why, hello there, angry nemesis man. You must be my new friend. Here to, uh... Hmm. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So if we activate orange pellets, the debuff from the panic button goes away. We get to keep all that block. This is a very scary nemesis. Please burn me. Ah, dang it. Oh, I have no way to generate that much block, actually. Hmm. Oh, no. Terrifying. It's going to be most of my health gone. Definitely glad I didn't upgrade all, I suppose. Could use the blade dance to get an energy, but what's the point? That's very minor damage. Oh. 
to stop attacking me. Thank you. Said stop. And there it is. How about triple finesse now, chat? With a kunai scaling our dexterity, life's gonna be pretty good. Life's gonna be pretty good. This, these, finesse finesse escape plan now looks so genius in retrospect, right? But I was hoping we'd get some kind of like block engine. I was trying to build towards something. That means we can probably last a lot longer in the time eater fight. I'm gonna have a schnooze. I'm not gonna take any of these, not even the Envenom. Does Envenom help against time eater? Eh. It's not a significant enough increase in the damage per card. Our main problem with time eater is that we have to play a lot of cards to do damage and that our time, our turns are going to get ended repeatedly. The Invenom doesn't help with that, because we're still reliant on playing all of the, the shivs. A card I'd much rather have against Time Eater is a Bouncing Flask. I guess Deadly Poison Plus is kind of close, but something where I don't have to play a lot of cards in order to get a lot of damage. I don't think an Invenom Plus, uh, one Deadly Poison Plus is good enough, though. All right, we're schnoozing. And I will fight another Elite here because I think this will be a lot easier than the nemesis we just defeated. Smiley face. Perfect. Look at this. I can put all the damage on Reptomancer and the daggers just end up dead anyway. Also, I just gained four points of dexterity on turn one from Kunai. Hmm. I got a bad hand. May choose to do a potion next turn. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, there's no more shivs left to draw, problematically. Doesn't mean I can't do anything about it, though. Shame this one doesn't die. Can kill one with the dagger, but it's less total damage. Let's take a bit here. We get a lizard tail. Boy, am I glad I did not choose upgrade all. If we would die, heal to half health instead. We're also offered a piercing whale, a way to shut down multi attacks, which we definitely would like to incorporate into this deck. That's the first piercing whale we've seen this entire run. Um. Well, that's ridiculous. 
Dead Branch completely changes the quality, character, and flavor of this run by adding a random card to my hand every time a card is exhausted. That could be really, really good or really, really bad, potentially. We're going to get a ton of cards. Each and every shiv exhausts, after all. That's a ton of card draw. Will it be too much? Deeply unclear. It's going to be really good in some fights and really weird in others. Let's do it. Let's do it. I would like to rest one more time. I'm going to head over this way. No more elites for me. I think it's going to be strong, but I'm truly unclear on that in a few ways. Added, you've created some pretty good cards already. I'll take a well laid plans. Keep this play dance for next turn. Never had a bad branch. I think that's a pretty, pretty accurate statement. I'm sure flooding the deck can be a thing, but the the sheer number of cards generated uh, kind of overwhelms the, the average quality. And because you're getting... It's just like Snekowai, right? The more the more cards you can draw in one turn with Snekowai, the higher number of free cards you're going to gain. So as your card draw approaches infinity, so too does the number of cards you can play per turn. The Dead Branch is kind of the same. Even though you're getting random quality cards, random plus large numbers equals guaranteed results. Oh, here. And I think I should just keep taking more piercing wells. I could buy another finesse. Could buy another finisher. Buy another card removal. Ori is a little bit late. I think Frozen Eye could be pretty dang powerful here. But it's going to be a little weird. What Frozen Eye uh, it does that's really, really valuable is make sure I can get malaise lined up. That's pretty valuable information. I'm gonna take it. And the piercing well. And not the finesse. Okay. Give me the shivs. I want the shivs. Right. So mostly Dead Branch allows us to do that on turn one. Oh, hey. Actually, Outmaneuver seems kind of good, too. Genuinely. First rule of Frozen Eye, don't talk about Frozen Eye. Slacks time. What's the difference between the relic we just picked up and a man wearing German slacks. One's a frozen eye, the other's a later hosen guy. That's what I got for you. We're going to go liquid memories over um, colorless potion here. Liquid Memories has a few utilities to it. Liquid Memories on Acrobatics or Calc Gamble could be particularly good. 
Oh, and I'm absolutely ready for this fight. This is a, a very dangerous fight that requires you to be able to do a lot of stuff on turn one. If you can, gold and rewards await. But if you can't, you will be perish. Perfect. So we got thousand cuts after image, finesse. I have to play the finisher? No, I don't. I can just purge the debuff next turn. Panic button. That one either. I'll drops. Get him. And we have tons of energy next turn for the Stivel Blade Dance that I'm going to draw into here. And all the resulting cards. Slight order there. I think it'd be a cool change if you got the relic first. I would like that. What happened here? This is not the turn I was promised. I guess I'm only taking two. It's not worth using a potion here. That's a big one. Bird face urn heals us two whenever we play a power card. One, two, three, four, five, six. Twelve health per combat. Although, that's only per boss fight. That's, that's definitely going to help. Deflect looking a lot better now with the kunai. I'll take a deflect. Actually, maybe I wanted that prepared. Oh well. Uh, and we're actually going to rest here. I'd like to not lose the Lizard Tail to the Time Eater if possible. Now that we have Dead Branch, upgrading cards is less impactful because we are so much... I mean, we're just going to be generating so many cards that uh, the cards that we have in the deck are, are just less a part of what we're doing. So I'm going to take more health into Time Eater. We're going to have Bird Face Turn and Lizard Tail both backing me up for this fight. Um, some backup that I'm sure I'm going to need. I've got Blade Dance and Finisher happening here. Good. Two. Actually, do I need that acro? Hold on. There's a whole lot of dead air coming up. Image first. Dagger throw second. Play dance. Figure it out from there. That's a good card. Oh man. Value town just got achieved here. Can burst this doppelganger for maximum ridiculosity. Or I can burst finesse to draw into the after image right now, but I don't think I want to do that. I want to go. Burst apple. And yeah, that's going to draw into the malaise, too. So, this is the stupidest burst apple ganger ever. Stupid in a good way, that is. This is one, two, three, four, five. So, yes, I can just do that. Well, that certainly solves the fight. <laughs> Guess I'll play the accuracy, too. We do take some damage to the Time Eater, but then problem is solved by and large on this turn.
be playing a few things that aren't. It's malaise. Like this tool's the trade, for example. And that tool's the trade also, for example. Minus four strength, actually. After all said and done, but I think that was still a good, really good turn. I might. <laughs> what? How many powers do I need? A lot, actually. They all heal me? Yes, more powers! Give them to me. But also play finisher times ten. Yes. More powers. So yeah, this is why the dead branch was probably a good thing. Time Eater's purging debuffs on this turn, so we don't want to play too many non-power cards. I think we just want to get some more stuff developed here. Looks like a great turn next turn. Could play a Blade Dance for a Kunai activation, but the damage we do won't matter. I'm going to draw next turn. Maybe three more? That seems unwise. We'll have to use Burst. Or I can play Gamble at the end. That's the other option. Alright, I have to choose two more cards to discard. the way to do it then. Unlimited power! Unlimited tools to trade. Um, probably shouldn't play any more cards. We're already going to be in a tough situation next turn as it is. Might have wanted to play that a little bit differently. Never mind, we're perfect here. Also, Riddle with Holes does how much damage? Oh my. Well, GG Time Eater. Looks like we actually healed almost a full from this fight. Wait, I can get two more. Get him, Thousand Cuts. GG. GG. Uh, Thousand Cuts is on top. Discard. Everything that isn't a Blade Dance. For Donu first, this Donu increases the strength of both of them. Um, corpse explosion. Hello. Why don't I just set you up? Please go on top of the deck. I have to 
bust through the artifact to make that work. I have to remove two artifact before the corpse explosion will work. So I'm going to play Poison Stab, and then next turn it'll be Leg Sweep Corpse Explosion. That's perfect. And then as soon as Donu dies, they'll both die. My perfect plan. Let's so draw Piercing Whale. What do I want Piercing Whale next turn? Piercing Whale next turn won't help me. Oh, hello. I'll make my life easier. Just do the damage and see where we end up. Greetings, Concentrate. Concentrate Expertise. Well, today's my lucky day, apparently. Discard the leg sweep, believe it or not. One, two, three, four, five. We just draw the finisher and win. Good fight. We even get the Nunchaku on nine. Well, we're in much better shape for Act Four than I thought we'd be. An incredible slew of relics right at the end that are all very powerful. Kunai, Dead Branch, Frozen Eye, Bird Face Turn. I get Lizard Tail too, actually. And sometimes this happens right at the end of a Spire Run, is you get a, a whole lot of power all at once. Uh, and that's that's good. That's what you're hoping for. That's what you're hoping for. Alright, versus the heart, I'm very much feeling like upgrade malaise is one of my better options. We could also consider upgrade caltrops, although I'm not sure we need the damage. Or upgrade panic button. Let's upgrade the malaise. Again, not gonna upgrade the after images because we have the gambling chip. It's essentially wasting a draw on turn one. Ooh, lantern. Could take another finisher. I don't think Abacus is all that good, but backflip sure is, especially backflip card removal is within our price range. That's 202. Remove strike, add backflip. That's right, Strong Goose. True Finesse came from the Colorless Card event. We actually saw three Finesses, but I chose to take a Panic Button over the third one. Ah. Pretty entertaining. I think that's what I'm doing. Remove Strike, add Backflip. And now we have two very good potions, a great set of relics, full health going in here to Act 4. I think our odds are pretty good. Six energy to spend this turn. Okay. Fuck damage, damage. drawing these three cards next turn. That's pretty spooky. I might use Duplication Potion on the Piercing Whale. Um, or we could end up Liquid Memorying something. Let's see what the other cards here give me. Perfect block. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Two burns go directly on top of the deck. That always makes this turn very, very challenging in this fight. Even if I acrobatics 
and finesse, we're really not going to draw into anything meaningful here. So it really feels like we're going to need to put at least one of our potions to good use. A double acro. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. That's probably not going to cut it. I don't think I can get a kill here. So I think I'd rather just spam piercing whales as our block mechanism. To that end, I'd rather use Liquid Memories Piercing Whale than Dupe Pot Piercing Whale. One, I think the Dupe Pot is better than the Liquid Memories. Two, it gets me a second card from Dead Branch, whereas the Dupe Pot will not. So we start with what? Acro, then After Image, then Piercing Whale, Piercing Whale? Yes. We should have seen what Dead Branch gave me first. Don't worry about it. So that gets reduced severely. Not enough, though. Then I can block a bit here, but still a bit of an ouchie. Thankfully, we have lots of healing, so we have ways to get it back. I could deploy Keltrops. I think I'd rather just keep the health at the moment. We'll have plenty of damage from the 4,000 cuts momentarily. Hmm. Can't quite draw to that panic button, huh? Or can I? Is there a way to kill you this turn? Maybe. Can you get any other attacks? Yes. Just a bunch of block. <laughs> well, actually, that kind of helps too, so... Bizarre. What are doing here? Dodge and roll malaise? Hmm. No, it's gotta be leg sweep malaise. We can them both. It's still a bit painful here. Should have focused my damage on shield first, is what this turn is indicating to me. Not too bad though. Now we get to kill all the spear here. Definitely ended up with our damage split a little bit. Kind of inevitable with the uh, thousand cuts after all. Heal me. Heal me. Bottle Lightning lets us choose a skill to have in the opening hand against the hearts. Given that we're fighting a Philosopher's Stone Empowered Heart, I really like bottling our malaise here. I think that would serve us exceedingly well. Catalyst Tactician Thousand Cuts. Thousand Cuts does not help against Heart. <laughs> Bottle of Malaise. Bottling Tactician was also a reasonable idea there so that we could discard it for more energy on turn one. I like that. Blade Dance, Blade Dance, Blade Dance Finisher is an option here. Holy moly. I think I'm gonna be dupe potting after image, especially with this opening hand. Won't get to finisher. If I discard the blade dance, I can do it. I get two blade dances and finisher this turn. Yes, we could do a dupe pot malaise, but uh, something to note about the heart is that whenever the heart buffs its strength, it also removes any strength down it has. So there's a, a very 
strict limit to how much strength down is actually useful against the heart, and it's not very much. Just enough to make sure the multi-attack reaches zero. Any more than that is excessive and will be essentially wasted. All right, now we're countering the beat of death beautifully. Let's see what we can make happen here. So just malaising for two is probably gonna be enough. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> well, I can only actually use uh, <laughs> one of them meaningfully here. But man, that's a lot of damage. That's funny. Looks like next turn's gonna be pretty sad overall, so I don't think I need to play out maneuver. Let's just go accuracy, finisher, malaise. Bring it to minus one. Minus one strength plus weaken will prevent any damage. Perfect two hundo there. Dang it! After image. Would have liked to play you. Alright, no power available this turn. That definitely looks like a bit of an ouchie for us. Although maybe Blade Dance will give me one if we're really lucky. Play the shifts first. Not a it's a good card, but not a power. That's enough, actually. That lets me draw to the after image now. Perfect. Backflip draw two. Now escape plan, get the block. Then finesse. Thank you, Frozen Eye, for letting that escape plan work better. Oh, yeah, I've already played an attack, so this will purge our debuffs. We're no longer vulnerable. We're no longer weak. We're no longer nothing. And I take one. Storm of Steel is here. Heck yeah. Get him, Storm of Steel. You got this. Get him. Choke. Next turn, yes. And minus one strength. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Alright, that was not much of a turn, actually. But we got those out of the deck. The last accuracy is coming up next turn. I could gamble now. That way I don't redraw the burn, but I also won't redraw the piercing whales if I do that. At least I think that's how that works. Um, I'm okay with where we are. Easy. Perfect panic button plus accuracy turn. Purge the debuffs. No block can suck it. And I can nightmare this deflect for next turn if I want to. Or I can just like draw cards. Let's nightmare the deflect. Stop this nasty 4x15 multi attack with some serious. Power. Attempt to play Kelt. Yeah, let's go. Flechettes, deflect, deflect, Keltrops. Sounds good here.
double for next turn? I could have an extremely large turn. Draw all of these cards. Or I could do... I mean, we guaranteed win if I double, right? Let's just do that. Gaining health from the heart fight. Go figure, huh? That's cool. Corpse explosions remove the artifact, then choke him. Get destroyed, nerd. What better way to finish than with the finisher? GG. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.